Hello, welcome to this short video. Um, the last video was a bit too long, so I've decided to redo it. Um, what you're looking at here is the boot up process of a 486 motherboard uh, running a Cirrus Media GX processor. Um, and what I mean by that is the Cirrus Media GX processor um, contained uh, a 586. Basically, it had Pentium instructions. Um, but it also contained an internal GPU and memory controller uh, and also contained a audio controller which was Sound Blaster compatible. The idea of this was for the cost conscious PC builder who wanted to build a very cheap PC that had built in audio, built in graphics, and didn't require any external uh, sound or video card. This was fantastic for the budget conscious office but absolutely atrocious for anybody wanting to run any level of game. So. This computer has 16 megs of RAM, but unfortunately a couple of megs of it are shared with the video card. Um, again, this is one of the first machines to do an integration where the uh, video card and GPU you know, and RAM are all shared, basically. Now what I mean by 486 is the last 486 that I showed you was a genuine through 486 where it had a VLB bus and the 486 you know, based you know, motherboard. The motherboard in the GX is also 486 based motherboard with 486 uh, instructions. The G CPU is the only part of the computer that actually is a Pentium class. Therefore, the machine reads and runs like a 486 with a few sort of enhancements. So in a lot of ways, if you wanted to get a 486 and see what it looked like with MMX technology, since those video cards don't exist, uh, sorry, those chips don't exist, for example, the AM you know, 133 and the uh, Intel 83, they don't have the uh, MX instructions. This chip basically has a few multimedia extensions insofar as it's able to run its own graphics through the CPU and it's able to run its own memory manager through the CPU. But again, the front side bus of it, what is it? It's 486 based. The other thing with the focus with this particular machine is because it's uh, all fully integrated, uh, everything runs at the same speed. Uh, so you won't find you know breakneck speed coming from this machine. That's for sure. I'm just gonna plug in the power here. So the first thing we'll do here is we'll just have a quick look at uh, DirectX Diagnostics just to show you what this machine is. Now what we're gonna do then is we're gonna run Unreal uh, on the machine and see what it runs like. Okay, this is DirectX Diagnostics. So this is the show you here. See the computer's been read as a 486, 14 megs of RAM, 50 meg uh, page file used, DirectX 7. The video card itself is the built-in video card, which basically is operated by the CPU. The CPU runs the video card. The video card is not run by an external card of any shape or form. So if I go into display, you'll see two megs. And you'll see Cirrus GX, Cirrus Corporation and uh, that's basically it, so it's the built-in one, so this is running from the, G the CPU, the CPU is a GPU as if it were, it's both it's an all-in-one. Okay, let's run Unreal and see what happens so basically what you're, what you're gonna see here is Unreal running on a 486, and again, I'm gonna have people say, it's not a 486 the motherboard is a 486 board, it's as simple as that the only thing that isn't 486 is the processor, the processor is the Cirrus Media GX, however before you're going out trying to buy one and going, great, I'll stick one of them onto my Pentium board. It won't work. Because of the integration of the board, it's not going not gonna to work unless you have the correct board. You must have a Cirrus board for the Cirrus GX chip. Simple as that. Yeah, it won't work any other way. Yeah, I didn't have the sound working on this the last time either, so... Let's see if it works this stuff. Might not be installed, or I might not have the sound card installed, so that's unfortunate. I don't I don't hold much faith for this working, but anyway. Um I did try to run this uh, Unreal tournament on the other 486 with the 2 meg uh, ATI Mac 32. Um, 
the sort of the frustrating thing about it is it actually runs. You can actually go into it and it will run with software. The, the, the CPU is capable of actually translating the software 3D with the video card. It's capable of doing it. It's just not quick enough to do it. So you get this extremely sluggish blockiness. Uh, it just won't move. And it, it's unfortunate really because it's kind of like the machine looks like it's able to do it. But there's not enough power in which to do it with. But it's given it its best. Three twenty by two forty. I wouldn't fancy making it any bigger than that. That's for sure. And there we have one. Rain. Whoop. And that's basically Unreal running on a four eighty six motherboard. Now. What we will do is we're going to revisit this game in a couple of minutes. What we're going to do is we're going to install a, a, another video card, one that's basically not part of the, of the actual CPU, and see if we can't improve that, and see if we can't run Unreal Tournament on what could best be described as a 486. 486 class motherboard with a Pentium class CPU. Just like you'd have if you were running uh, with the Pentium 83 or the AM133. Okay, that's the fly through. Okay, so you have an idea now of how clunky and jumpy that is. And um, so we're going to come back to this now in another minute. I'm going to revisit it. We're going to install. I think I have an ATI 3D charger there with DVD capability. So we'll uh, we'll lash that on and uh, we'll come back to it in a few minutes too. So come back for the second part.